They're selling jewelry and everything else and real pushy about it. Like, if yeah. you say no, they're just going to be like, oh, well, it's only this much. And you're like, no. And then you have to be like. Shalom, YouTube family. Welcome back to our channel. And if you're new here, welcome to the family. Before we get started, we just want to remind y'all to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted to all of our new videos. Yep. So in this video, we're going to give y'all a few things that we don't like so much about being here in Tanzania. So we showed y'all all the beauties and wonders of Tanzania, but to every country, there's also a negative side to it. So we don't want to, and we don't encourage you to romanticize any place. Yes. Every place has its issues. America does, and it, there are problems here as well. So the first thing is Uber and Bolt. So obviously, once you get here, you don't have a car, you have to have a way to get around. So Uber and Bolt. The problem is these apps use maps that are not necessarily up to date. There are roads that don't exist. So when you're getting around or when your driver is trying to get to you, it's kind of difficult sometimes especially if you're not living off a main road because a lot of those roads are not named so the uber driver won't always know where to go also when you're riding inside the uber of the boat and you have to get to your destination a lot of times the first thing they ask you is where am i going so that's a little weird to me seeing that they have the same map that i have <laughs> so i don't understand why they ask me where i'm going when they are literally looking at the same exact thing and so like, when we first got here, we got lost often because I don't know where I'm going for one. And uh, most places don't have a, like specific addresses to where you can go to and just put it in like you could in America. So it'd be, it's a lot of confusion when it comes to getting to areas that you don't know particularly. Mm -hmm. I would recommend if when you first get here and you don't know where you are, to when you're in Bold or Uber to also use Google Maps. I tend to pull mm -hmm. up Google Maps because it gives you different routes and yeah. it seems to be more accurate. So another thing is the water heaters. It's not even a huge deal. It's just a little inconvenient. Yeah. So if you want to take a shower, you have to think about that ahead of time and turn on the water heater <laughs> if you want to take a warm shower. I mean, it is warm here, but obviously I don't want to take an ice cold shower either way. Right. You also have to kind of be quick with your showers because the water goes out pretty fast. Now the place that we're in now, the hot water lasts a little bit longer, but you can't take 20, 30 minute showers and expect yeah. the water to stay hot the whole time. Like when I'm doing my natural hair routine and I need a whole <laughs> lot of hot water, you got, you got to conserve that water. You can't just be in there forever. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the beaches. Now, Tanzania, Dar es Salaam in particular, and Zanzibar have some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. But unfortunately, there's a lot of trash and debris on those beaches. Mm -hmm. And most of the government beaches don't have uh, people that go out and clean the trash up every morning. I've seen in some places in Zanzibar where they actually have people to come out and clean the trash every single morning but that's just not the case everywhere so you have but that a was a resort beach. not a public beach yeah right it was a resort so the beach is being dirty it's it's not a horrible thing but it just make it look a lot better if you had you know the trash off the beach also well depending on where you go there's a lot of soliciting on the beach yeah so they're selling some stuff you might want you want might want a fresh coconut some coconut water but then they're selling jewelry and everything else and real pushy about it. Like if yeah. you say no, they're just going to be like, oh, well, it's only this much. And you're like, mm -hmm. no. And then you have to be like. Some, so. Sometimes it almost feels like harassment yeah. because they'll be you'll tell them, no, 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 we don't want it. And then you'll keep walking there, walk with you and talk with you the whole time while you're on the beach. And it's like, dude, like you if just, you're trying to take a quiet yeah. walk not gonna happen <laughs> hey, dude, just let us enjoy our time if we want it we're gonna get it if not just relax and go sell to somebody else so one of the more important things that most every diaspora is going to have to deal with at some point is being overcharged for pretty much everything not being able to speak the language is a huge deal out here because as soon as they hear you speak english or whatever your native tongue is that's not swahili you will be overcharged a lot 
<laughs> and the fact is, you're going to have to negotiate. And that's, I understand why they do that, because they feel like we have money, but we're not rich. A lot of us came out here because we wanted a better life, not because we had a whole bunch of money and we could just travel everywhere. I would say 98% of the people are good people here and won't try to get over on you. In fact, there are a lot of people that we have met that we don't even know that well that are native mm -hmm. that will tell us, like, no, this is a good, even your, even your Uber driver sometimes, they'll be like, no, that's too much. Like, they will yeah. tell you if they're trying to get you. But you, nine times out of ten, will be overcharged. That's just how it is out here. And when it comes to little scams, that really angers me. For example, we just had a situation with an Uber driver that canceled the ride while I was driving in there and when we got there tried to overcharge me and I wasn't going for it because I knew what the price was I was able to go back on my recent trips and see that I only had to pay him three thousand he was asking for eight thousand so little things like that bothers me because now you're just trying to get over on me you think I'm dumb so it's not all of the people here most of the people are nice down-to-earth people but there are some that was going to try to get you for money and that's the same as everywhere else yeah. but it's rougher when you don't speak the language <laughs> yeah but once you learn to speak the language then a lot of the overcharging and you know the little scams it's not going to happen because okay they're going to assume that you know the price okay so the wi-fi situation it's not the fastest internet <laughs> it's not it's not horrible but it is slower like when we upload videos it could take hours to upload a five minute video um will typically go to a cafe or something and use the internet to do that because it's just draining hours and really not even making any pro progress. Yeah, so the, so the Wi-Fi in our Airbnb when we first got there was a lot faster and that was because they got it set up from a company and they brought the uh, router there and did all the wiring. So obviously that's gonna be faster, but if you're not in an area that allows that, then you have to settle for routers. Or a hotspot. Or a hotspot. And a lot of times, depending on where you are in the area, you won't have good you know, service or the router won't be very strong. So you have to take that in consideration where you're moving also. Because if you live somewhere like that's a little more secluded, then nine times out of ten, you won't have strong internet. It's um, through a SIM card, so it's almost like the internet on your phone. So it's yeah. like it's usable, but it's not the same as if you had strong wired Wi-Fi in your house or apartment or whatever. Also, so depend I don't know if it's depending on where you live or what, mm -hmm. but there are power outages. Yeah. Um, and the apartment that we're in now, we have experienced that actually more frequently lately. It's inconvenient but honestly it's not that bad mm. we just discovered probably the second or third time it happened that we had a generator the whole time that we yeah. didn't even know about yeah um because i think the first time we were leaving anyway we were headed out for the day so we were just like whatever and i think it was on when we came back but when it happened when we were there then they told us there's a switch um there was only one time that the generator, I guess, didn't work either. So we had to go a while, but it was like a few hours. We both fell asleep yeah. and we woke up and it was back on. So it's not that big of a deal either. Yeah, it just can kind of suck at times when you're doing something yeah. on your phone or your laptop and it's not all the way charged yeah. and the power go off or something. Yeah. And now you got to gotta spare, you know, the, the uh, charge and stuff on your electronics. And then the refrigerator, obviously, going to depend on how long uh the power is out can the stuff can start getting warm in your refrigerator so those little things can be little inconveniences but it's something that's not horrible but we don't love so we do recommend you to get like power banks and stuff for when the power go off so mm -hmm. if your stuff is not charged you can just you can charge it with your power banks and have to worry about everything dying when the power is out so another thing that i don't love is laundry <laughs> <laughs> so that has been my thing since we left the Airbnb and got the new apartment. There's no washing machine. Um, we talked to them about whether or not you can get one. It sounded like you can, but I don't even know. So we got some buckets and some hand washing detergent, and I've been washing the clothes. We've been washing the clothes. I've been mostly <laughs> washing the clothes. Um, it's not 
it's not horrible, but it's not easy. It's a lot of work. It's a lot. Like, you got to kind of soak the clothes. You got to agitate the clothes. But, like, with your yeah. hands. I've seen people on the internet use a stick. I don't have a stick. So, we going. So, I got to get in there. Elbow grease. You know, depending on how dirty they are, I might do two rounds with soap and then the hardest part rinse probably them. Be you gotta rinse all the make sure you rinse all the soap out and you have to squeeze out as much water as possible before you hang it so it can be it's, it's tedious and it can be a lot of work you have for sure work up a sweat and yeah. when you come from having a washer and dryer in a, in the states and not having to worry about none of that it's an adjustment and just something we're gonna have to you know get adjusted to so one other thing which isn't a huge deal but kind of <laughs> i feel like um, when it comes to food, I've been craving a lot of things yeah. that either I can't find or are just expensive. Like, yeah. like I'd want Oreos and it's really expensive mm-hmm. just because it's imported. Right. And, you know, you get those regular chocolate cookies with the cream and it's not the same. <laughs> yeah. So it's like stuff like that. We just miss, well, I miss little stuff because yeah. I'm craving stuff. So... Yeah, and it's it's not a huge deal, obviously. You know, a lot most of the local foods and stuff, and the African options are just as good anyway. But when it, talking about food, um, it's not a a large variety of different foods you can get. Like when we was in America, you can get Chipotle, this day chick but There's just a, a lot of different options here. Mm-hmm. It's not as many options, so you know, it's a lot of grilled meats. Uh, mm-hmm. Rice and beans, vegetables mm-hmm. and fruits, which are French fries. French fries yeah. for days. Yeah, which is all fries on fries on fries. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all delicious, obviously. But it just sometimes we want to switch it up a little bit and have different foods that we might not have that option to eat here. So, mm-hmm. but like I said, uh, it's all going to be adjustments and. Overall, Tanzania has been wonderful to us, and we really love it here. Absolutely. And we love the people here. Everything, the people are so amazing. That's what makes Tanzania so beautiful. So um, we're going to end out the video like this. And if y'all enjoyed it, just please share y'all like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to see more of these type of videos. And we thank you, and we love y'all. Shalom. Shalom.